This is an extreme short shaft install being done on a 98 TJ. Now there's some small differences on XJs and some of the other models. Be sure to check your instructions. It is possible to do this install without removing the belly pan, but this will make it a little easier for us to see and it's going to save us an oil mess in that pan. Use a jack stand or even a tie down strap and just stretch it across the frame just ahead of the belly pan. We need to support the trance before removing the belly pan. With all but one of the pan bolts removed on each side, remove the trance mount nuts in the center of the belly pan. Before removing the last two pan bolts, have someone assist with its removal. Now, make sure your assistant has substantial arm strength, as demonstrated here. Remove the T-case drain plug with a 10 millimeter Allen. Now here's a tip, catch the oil. We're gonna remove the rear drive line, never to use it again. Cut the boot straps and remove the four eight millimeter U-joint strap bolts and remove the drive line. Move to the front of the T-case and remove the four driveline U-joint bolts. Now it's not necessary to completely remove the driveline, just tie it up out of the way. Using an inch and an eighth socket, remove the front driveline yoke. Without an impact gun, this is going to be a project. Once you get the nut off, remove the yoke. Let's move to the rear of the transfer case and remove the speedo gear assembly. Use a 13 millimeter socket on the single bolt. Now you can remove the entire transfer case to do this install, but it's not really necessary. To save time, we're just gonna split the case in the Jeep and only remove the back half of the transfer case. Remove all seven 15 millimeter bolts and that one oddball 10 millimeter 12 point. Remember where that one goes. You'll need to put it back in the same place. The tail shaft housing is being held on by another five bolts. Use a 15 millimeter socket. Adam just started a bolt in the transfer case just so that it wouldn't hit him on the foot if he gets overzealous. There's some nicely placed notches cast into the case half to pry from. We're going to remove the entire back half assembly as one big chunk. It will make it much easier to film the process. With that safety bolt removed, the entire back half of the transfer case can be removed, output shafts and all. Now it'll get ugly when you pry that tea case apart, so make sure you have a drain pan handy. Check out that big old gob of silicone hanging from the main shaft. We'll talk about that later. With the assembly on the bench, we'll be able to show the install a little easier. Some of our techs prefer to separate the tail shaft housing from the back case half while it's still bolted in the Jeep. It's a little more solid when prying and removing stubborn seals and snap rings. To get the tail shaft housing separated, we need to get out a couple of snap rings behind that oil seal. The oil seal can be a real project to remove, but bear in mind that the tail shaft housing, main shaft, and snap rings are all going to be replaced, but you're going to need some really good snap ring pliers. Pry the tail shaft housing away from the back case half. See that clean looking UFO shaped plate? Yeah, that's the oil pump. Be careful with it when you separate that tail shaft housing. As you disassemble the main shaft, save yourself some time. Stack them in the order they were removed. With the two output shafts on the bench, Remove the drive sprocket snap ring and slide the gear off the main shaft. 
That sounds easy. It's not. You'll probably trash that ring just getting it off. If you slide the gears off the original shaft, then right back onto that new short shaft, there's no room for air. Install the supplied snap ring. And take a few seconds and visually inspect the gears, synchros, and chain. Look for missing synchro teeth and any excess wear. Slide the oil pump pickup tube out of the housing and clean it. Geez, look at that. Remember that silicone hairball that was hanging from the shift forks? Yeah, that's what you'll find in a transfer case that was assembled with way too much silicone. That silicone will find its way into the oil pump screen, and in some cases, it'll completely plug it up. With no oil flow, yeah, you're going to grenade your transfer case. Now, we just used brake clean to clean up the case half and get it ready for install. Let's talk about the Terra 2 low kit for a second. As long as you're going to all the work of installing a short shaft, now's a great time to install a Terra 2 low. This little mod will allow low range, two wheel drive. Imagine being able to steer while in low range. The install is really pretty simple with the T case disassembled. Remove the shift linkage arm using a 14 millimeter. All right, pay attention. That arm is pointing down on this TJ. This arm could go back in numerous configurations. Adam left it attached to the linkage to help save some confusion. Pop the arm off so the sector shaft is ready to be removed. Remove the mode and range forks along with the synchro sleeve. Caution. If you reinstall that synchro sleeve backwards, your transfer case is gonna make all kinds of noise when you drive it and it is possible to put it in backwards. That extended tapered part on the sleeve goes towards the front of the Jeep. It's much easier if you just keep the stack of gears together and in order. Inspect the mode forks, nylon tabs for wear and replace if necessary. The range fork will be replaced in all 231 non-Rubicon cases. Snap the new nylons into place and reassemble. Remove the detent bullet and spring assembly. Remove the shift sector and replace it with a new Terra 2 Low. Reinstall the shift shaft seal and nylon spacer. All right, we're gonna get back to the short shaft kit install. Clean up the mating surfaces of both case halves with brake clean. The machined mating surfaces are very susceptible to damage. We recommend using a razor blade or a gasket scraper. Don't use any kind of abrasive material to clean the case halves. Adam gently used a soft wire brush to remove the silicone. Once the case halves are clean, reinstall the range and mode fork assemblies. Reinstall the chain on the main shaft and front output shafts and slide the assembly back into the T-case. Now this is going to be a juggling act any way you do it.
Before final assembly, it's not a bad idea to slide the rear case half on without silicone and just manually run the shifter through its cycle. Don't forget the shift fork spring and magnet. When it all checks good, go ahead and run a small bead of silicone on the case. Remember, it's a machine fit. Don't get carried away with the silicone. Final install the case half with the oil pump in place. Be careful. Make sure the splines are engaged and the tabs on the pump are all seated. The pickup tube also needs to be plugged into the pump. It's a good idea to install at least a couple of bolts in the case half to hold it into position before installing that new tail shaft housing. Slide the new speed sensor tone ring onto the main shaft. Now it's going to spin freely on the shaft. The driveline yoke will actually pinch it and hold it into place. Run a small bead of silicone and install the new housing. Make sure it seats by hand before running the bolts in. If you haven't already installed all of the case half bolts, do so now. Torque all bolts to 25 foot-pounds. Disconnect the original speedo gear and replace it with the new speed sensor. Plug it in and reinstall the bolt using a 13 millimeter. Reinstall the yokes on the front and rear outputs. It won't hurt to put a little silicone on the splines as leak insurance. Throw some Loctite on the yoke nut and torque to 100 foot-pounds. You may have already installed the detent spring assembly. If not, do so now. Install the drive lines while the belly pan's out of the way. Let's wrap it up by installing the belly pan.